in this seventh video of the uh, organic chemistry series we will begin identifying and naming the various functional groups that were mentioned in video six now this particular video uh, will concentrate on the identification and naming of alcohols, thiols, and phenols. Now when we look at the structure of the alcohols, the thiols, and the phenols, they will consist of a hydrocarbon that's going to singly bond to an oxygen or to a sulfur compound. And they'll vary um, from functional group to functional group with alcohols having an OH group attached to an alkane. The phenols will have an OH group attached to a benzene ring and the thiols will have an SH group attached to the alkane. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is go through and begin identifying these three functional groups. So here we have an alcohol. Now we do have the word misspelled but we do have an alcohol and the general formula for an alcohol is ROH and the R represents our carbon chain and here's our OH or our hydroxyl group. So anytime you see an OH attached to a carbon chain you have some type of alcohol. Now the phenol is going to be that benzene ring with that rotating double single bonds and an OH attached to the benzene ring. Our thiol is going to be similar to an alcohol. We will have our uh, hydrocarbon chain, but we will have a sulfur attached to it, an SH attached to it. So once we become comfortable with identifying alcohols and we can look at the chemical formula and determine that it's an alcohol, we can then proceed to naming the, uh, the alcohol. And when we name the alcohol, the parent name is going to end in OL. And that OL ending is going to indicate that we have an alcohol present. And the first thing we want to do is we want to find the longest chain of carbons that that OH is attached to. And we're going to look at this chain and we're going to number the carbons starting at the end closest to the OH. So in this case, this would be carbon 1. We're going to look and see if we have any substitute groups on here, if we have any multiple bonds. And so we're going to use a number to indicate the position of the OH. We're going to use a number to indicate the position of any multiple bonds and any side chains that comes off. We'll use our prefixes to indicate if we have more than one OH group. Um, but let's look and see how we've identified this particular chemical. It is uh, three carbons long, and we have a multiple bond, and that multiple bond is between carbon two and three. So we have a two propene, and we're going to drop that E, and we're going to have the OL ending, but we need to have the location of the uh, alcohol, and it's on carbon one, and so we put the one, and so our name would be two propene one all. On this chemical right here, you'll notice that we have a cyclohexane, and it's um, not a benzene ring. We do not have the double single bonds, so it's a cyclohexane, and then we have the alcohol coming off of it, so we could call this um, cyclohexane one all or just cyclohexanol. Without the number, we would know that it's on carbon one. On this particular chemical, we have a one carbon uh, chain right here. So we have a methanol with the uh, OH coming off. Now we're going to call this methanol instead of benzene because we named the chain with the OH. And so we have our methanol and then we have this benzene ring coming off. And anytime the benzene ring comes off as a side chain, that's called a phenol group. So this would be called phenyl methanol. Here we have some additional problems to just review over and ensure that you're comfortable with the nomenclature of alcohols. So on this first example, we have a two carbon chain with an OH coming off. We identify this as an alcohol. Two carbons uh, prefixes eth, so we would have an ethanol. 
Now, because this could be carbon-1 or this could be carbon-1, it's understood that the OH comes off of carbon-1 and no letter would be needed. However, if you feel comfortable putting 1-ethanol, it's not technically wrong. It's just you will not see that in the books. Now, on this example, you would see the number of the OH. So anytime you get to a chain larger than a 2, 3 and up, you're going to see the number for the location of the OH. So we've identified that this is a 3-carbon chain. It's an alcohol. And so we're going to have a propanol. And we're going to see that this comes off of carbon 1. So we have a 1-propanol. On this example, you'll notice that we also have a 3-carbon chain. However, the OH is coming off of carbon 2, and that makes this a 2-propanol. And so I did put additional examples for you to review over. And if you have any questions, you just email me or stop by my classroom, and we can cover these in more detail. Before moving on, I do want to cover uh, what would happen if we have a chemical compound that has more than one OH on it. And so we're going to look at this dark black line, and we can see that we have one, two carbons in this chain. And so we have an ethane, and we have single bonds only, so ethane. And we see that we have one, two, three alcohols in this particular example. So we would have a 1, 1, 2, triol. So the name of this chemical would be ethane 1, 1, 2, triol. Now on this example, we also have an ethane. And we notice that we have 1, 2 alcohols. So we have it on carbon 1 and carbon 2. So this would be ethane 1, 2, diol. Moving on to phenols, the first thing we need to do is to identify a phenol. And again, remember that the phenol is going to be that benzene ring with the OH attached. So anytime you see that, the answer is phenol. Now anything that comes off of that chain in addition to that OH needs to be named. So this OH would occupy carbon number one in our benzyl shape. And so we would have something coming off of carbon 4. And since we have something coming off of carbon 4 and we have something coming off of carbon 1, that puts us as the para shape. And we talked about that early on in our videos. So we would call this parachlorophenol or you could call it 4-chlorophenol. In this example right here, again, we notice that we have a phenol present, and then we have three bromines coming off. Those bromines would come off of carbon 2, 4, and 6. So we have a 2, 4, 6 tribromophenol. Remember that our thiols have that SH group attached to our carbon chain instead of the OH. And so common names for the simple thiols uh, can be derived by naming the alkyl group bonded to the SH and adding the word mercaptan. And so here we would see that we have a carbon chain of 2, prefix eth, so we would have ethyl mercaptan. Now this right here is an isobutyl mercaptan, and let's talk about what isobutyl means. Now isobutyl means that we have four carbons and it makes a T-shaped. If we were to go by the IUPAC naming system, we would name this ethane followed by the word thiol. We would follow our normal uh, nomenclature rules, and we would name this a 2 methyl one propyl thiol. And the reason we do that is remember that this would be carbon one because it's attached to the SH and this would be our carbon two. Now here we have uh, some examples and I've got a mixture of our alcohols and our thiols and our phenols for us to practice with. And I've just blocked off some that I know we're not quite ready to name. So you have to first identify that here we have an alcohol. We identify the chain and we have a chain of three carbons. So we have single bonds and we'll have a propanol. 
because of the OH, and that OH is coming off of carbon 2, so we would name that 2-propanol. And this right here, we have a cyclopentane going on with an alcohol coming off, so we'll have a cyclopentanol. This will be on carbon number uh, 1. We have on carbon number 2 an ethyl group coming off, 1, 2 um, carbons. And then over here on carbon 4 we have a methyl group coming off. And remember we want to put the ethyl first and then the methyl and that's based on uh, the alphabet. So we have a 2-ethyl, 4-methyl cyclopentanol. Here we have a thiol, and we'll notice that we have this as being three carbons long, one, two, three, so we have a propane thiol. Here we have a uh, phenol, and we know that's a phenol with the OH attached to our uh, aromatic compound, and we have a methyl group coming off, so we could call this 2-methylphenol, or using our uh, prefixes, because we're in the 1-2 position, that's ortho. And so we would have an orthomethylphenol. In this example here, we also have a phenol group, and we have bromines coming off, and that's coming off of carbon 2 and 4, so we would have a 2,4-dibromophenol.